So I don't really ever do introductions to my videos. I usually just like to jump into the action. However, I think the motorcycle deserves a bit of an explanation. On the last video, this bike did not look anything the way it does today. If you've been following me on Instagram, you know I've been working hard over the past couple months to get it to where it is, kind of in the background of other projects I've been working on. This video is specifically about doing the seat for the motorcycle. Stay tuned to the end of the video and I'll go into a little bit more details on what the plan is for showing you how we got this far on the bike. All right, so I have the battery tray and everything in it and I've roughly laid everything out. So I'm just gonna drill holes for all the mounts. Uh, this is a 3D printed bracket that I did specifically for the solenoid. So pretty excited about that. I had to get everything sitting level within the battery tray so I could prep out my form for the seat pan. Now I did miss filming this, however, I wrapped the entire bike more or less in garbage bags and plastic wrap. This gave me a perfect surface to spread my mold release all over the sections of the bike where I'd be adding the fiberglass and the resin. I added a bit of molding clay under the front section of the seat pan so I'd be able to have enough room to add a pin that would connect the seat pan to the underside of the gas tank. With all of our surfaces prepped, we started cutting up the fiberglass into squares as well as prepping the polyester resin. Now it shouldn't surprise you that Total Boat does supply all these kind of products as well as the epoxies that most of us in the maker community are used to. So when I reached out to Total Boat about this project, they were pretty excited to help. In the maker community, we don't see a lot of this kind of work being done. And honestly, after doing it, I'm not sure why. Fiberglass was a fairly easy material to work with, be it a little stinky. It definitely was something that I enjoyed doing. It's like paper mache for adults, and I'm looking forward to doing more of this in the future. Now, I'm not sure if this was the best way to have laid out the fiberglass and sheets. In fact, on my second layer, I used one sheet that was the rough size of the entire pan, and on my third coat, I did the same thing. But at the end of the day, both actually worked quite well to build up the layers of fiberglass, and this stuff was incredibly strong, even just after three layers. So what we would do is lay down one complete layer let it dry completely, and then come back the next day to add an additional layer. Just a couple tips. First of all, make sure you're in a very well ventilated area. Keep a pair of scissors on hand and buy as big of a bag of chip brushes as you possibly can. Oh, and this roller that I'm using, it's specially designed just for this. It's a laminating epoxy roller. Since we were already doing the fiberglass for the seat pan, my buddy Joe brought over this cowl that he built for his cafe racer. I kid you not, out of cardboard and duct tape. This thing was rad. Now, no ducks were hurt in the making of this cowl. However, as you'll see later on, the cowl didn't really, well, survive the demolding process. Which was fine because it served its purpose and it gave Joe and I the baseline for the cowl for his cafe racer. It's definitely hard to see, but on these rounded edges, this roller works so well just to smooth everything out. Looking back, we actually should have wrapped this in plastic as well. That would have made the demolding process a lot easier, but we actually found that the resin reacted with the glue from the duct tape. It left a sticky film on the bottom side of the fiberglass, which Joe said he was easily able to clean up with a bit of acetone. And again, just as we did with the seat pan, we let this dry overnight and we did three layers of the fiberglass. After a few days laying this cure, I came out in my best pair of shop sweatpants and demolded the seat pan from the motorcycle. The easiest way I found to cut the fiberglass was just to use a zip disc on my angle grinder. This step was just a great way to take off the extra material so I could go back to the bike and get my final shape of what I wanted the seat pan to look like. So I just roughly trimmed and took the seat off of the mold, or not off the mold, but I had everything wrapped in plastic as you saw, and fiberglass is dry. Uh, this needs to, be, <laughs> needs to be shaped, obviously, and sculpted in just the right way, but... That is strong stuff. Now, this was my hack 
to getting everything to the same height all around the edge of the C-pan. And I literally just hot glued a felt marker onto a scrap of wood. I had a starting point and I just followed that all around the sides and the back of the C-pan to get the right height. This was by no means perfect, but I was able to then come back and sand it to the right shape so it was consistent on both sides of the seat pan. With the seat pan roughed out, I was able to drill holes into the bike where the seat pan would sit to add bolts for mounting. And then I shaped a thin piece of sheet metal, which I attached to the front of the seat pan, and that was used to mount the seat pan to the underside of the gas tank. Because these bolts were gonna be buried underneath the foam for the seat, I just used a bit of epoxy just to hold the bolts for the latch and the rear two mounts in place. I was getting pretty excited by this point. The seat pan locked in perfectly, and it fit great onto the back of the bike. I can now move on to attaching the foam to the seat pan. And you can kind of see that I sculpted out the front of the foam just to give a bit of a relief where the front of the seat pan kicks up. After carefully applying spray adhesive, I wrapped the entire thing in plastic wrap just to make sure that it was tight all along the edges. Now I didn't film this because I panicked, but I ended up unwrapping it and actually trimming this a little bit before then rewrapping it. Then I came back a few days later for Motorcycle Christmas and I could unwrap the plastic off of the seat pan and foam. Hey, I know this isn't my typical woodworking project, but if you like this kind of build that kind of strays away from the norm, make sure you comment below and let me know. And if you haven't subscribed yet, I would love to see you hit that subscribe button. I'm super close to another milestone and would love your help to get there. For majority of the rough shaping, I just used a box cutting knife and the angle grinder with an 80 grip flap disc wheel. Once I was happy with my rough shape, I came back with my Merca sander and 120 grit Abernat sandpaper just to get that final shape that I was looking for. Once I was happy with that, I was asked by the leathersmith to drill holes about an inch apart on the bottom side of the fiberglass seat pan. The leather wrap will be attached with pop rivets, so he needed these holes done in such a way where it wouldn't bunch and would evenly wrap around the outside of the seat. I want to say thanks again to Total Boat for supporting this build. If you have questions about the products that I use, I've tagged them below, and you can check out Total Boat's website and use my discount code if you're looking to do something similar. Oh, and back to Joe's seat cowl. Like I said, the frame that he made didn't survive the unmolding process, and the plan moving forward on this cowl is to actually reinforce it from the inside. But let me tell you, it's gonna look so good once he's done. If you're following along on Instagram, you'll definitely see his bike in the future as well. But check out how tight the fitment was. Working on this bike has definitely let me tap into a different skill set, but also combine some skills that I use more often. So keep an eye out, because I actually have some woodworking projects coming specifically for this bike. Get you up to speed on the motorcycle. I will be putting up videos on how I got this far. The reason I haven't so far is just because there's been other videos that I want to get up and share with you guys. So if you haven't subscribed, make sure you do so, so you don't miss the rest of those videos. I've got lots of other stuff coming on. If you're following me on Instagram, you'll be able to see the leather that I actually chose for the seat sooner than you will probably on my YouTube channel. I've got a couple videos coming out, hopefully in the next few weeks on some other projects. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next build.